إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى قال الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا عباد الله فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-hayyu al-qayyum the ever living Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who has given us the opportunity of being here today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who has given us the lifespan to be here knowing that today the 26th of the hijjah 1444 alhamdulillah the reason of giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for us to prolong in our good deeds. And we know very well nowadays, we're looking forward for the end of the year. And for verily, it marks something which is known to be the Hijri. And we all hear about the Hijri calendar. But there are three aspects that I would like to speak in the first khutbah, which is about the perseverance of the Prophet sallallahu and the difficulty that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what did that Hijrah show to the world in regards to racism. We know very well how it came into existence. We know very well about the 12 month Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke about. And we know very well the, the narration and the story from the seerah of the Prophet about the Hijrah. But when you look at it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission to the Prophet ﷺ after 13 years. Now at that moment, now you may go and migrate. We could have actually sit down here and said, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most beloved Prophet to Allah, the most beloved slave that have walked on the face of the earth. Why did Allah Azza wa Jal allowed him to suffer that much? Well, this brings the ayah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the best of example, at the Qudwa, Uswatun Hasana. Had the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu not undergone all this kind of pressure and harm and persecution, when this happened to us, whom we would have been looking at as a role model? 13 years. When it comes to the Hijrah, people will think about the 13 years he's gone through. Had the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost patience, and within that 13 years, we have nothing called the Hijrah today. When it comes to da'wah, when it comes to enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, if you, not go, if you do not have patience and perseverance, forget about it. As a teacher, as a murabbi, as a nurturer, if patience and perseverance is not there, in your syllabus or your way of life, then forget about this profession. All the prophets had it. Today, the Kalimat Tawheed is still here because of the perseverance of each and every prophet that has come. We know what happened to Yunus والسلام, when he felt that it was over. Allah Azza wa Jal brought him back to Nainawa. Carry on, be persevere in your da'wah, complete it, and then you will live. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, other with persecution, he carried on, La ilaha illallah. Because of being someone who wants to spread the word of Islam, you need to have your knowledge, you need to enjoy the good, you need to forbid the evil, and then you should be ready with the harm that comes throughout your da'wah. It's easy for us to preach, <clears throat> easy for us to enjoy the good, and forbid the evil, but it is hard for us to be perseverance in calling towards the haqq, which means the harm that come into it. All the prophets, they had it. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was persevered for the 13 years in Mecca. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open his way. Where it turns over here where Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا The more you are persevere, you strive in the worship and the pleasure of Allah, Allah will open your way today or tomorrow. Allah will open your way. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِي اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَا You have your piety and your fear and love of Allah, Allah is going to open your way today or tomorrow. It took the Prophet ﷺ 13 years for him to go to Medina. And we people nowadays, we want quick fix. Everything happened in our life, we want to be fixed very quickly. Perseverance is not there in our qualities and attributes anymore. That's why we fall into depression and stress and sadness today. And Nabi ﷺ did not do that. After 13 years, Allah has opened his way. He went to Medina. Was it easy in Mecca? No, Allah. It was hard. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly, one after the other, إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى For very after each and every hardship come easiness. After each and every hardship come easiness. Look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca and look at his life in Medina. It tells you over here, without perseverance, and without seeking the help of Allah Azza wa Jal in your hard time, you will never ever find any kind of easiness into your life. So whenever all these kind of issues happening, marital issues, financial issues, youth issues, the dunya issues, we go back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For therefore the hijrah is what it teaches us. The way more lesson that we can deduce. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Medina, straight away. We know very well. And in spite, before this verse was revealed, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the Mu'akhah, made the brotherhood between the Ansar and the Muhajirun. No matter where you're from, what sect you are from, no matter, you come together as a cohesion society. Even though who didn't believe in Islam in Medina, he allowed them to be together. But there was a constitution of Medina was put in place. It shows the leadership. It shows the anti-racism. It tells you what the Hijra is all about, my brother and my sisters. The third, the three main points when we look ab about it, we see that these three things bring a successful society. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easier upon us to put these kind of teaching into implementation, even though we are having put only of the leadership of our family, we can still put that into implementation. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. People speak about resolution. People speak about what you want to become, the new year is coming. Well, they speak about the December and the January. We know very well, a couple of days, Muharram is coming in 1445. When we as a Muslim, we sit here, and we know that our aim in this dunya is to please Allah Azza wa Jal. When we sit back and think about it, what did I do this year? And how can I better myself the next year? Ramadan has passed by, alhamdulillah. Last 10 days of Ramadan, of the Hijjah has passed by, alhamdulillah. I've got the best of nights and days. Allah has given me the opportunity. How am I in the eyes of Allah, Azza wa Jal? How can I get better? How was my salah this year? How's my sadaqah? How's my relationship with my family? The coming year, this is what I want to do. I want to memorize more Quran. Regardless of how old I am, I want to memorize more Quran. And we put that step from now. I want to stop my nawafil. I want to stop my tahajjud. I want to learn more. I want to rectify my mistake between me and my society and my people. I want to make sure that the issue between me and my wife and my children are being rectified. These are the things that we need to actually put as a resolution. How can become a better person in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not about how many millions, not about how many villa I'm going to get, and not about where I'm going to get in my status. That's from Allah Azza wa Jal. Your status, your arzaq, everything comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. But your effort and your status between you and Allah Azza wa Jal come from your effort. 
a new intention. But therefore, this is what we want to become next year. This time, the Hijjah, 1445, many of us might not be here. We could be under the ground in the Qabr. So from now until next year, we have an intention. We have a near and a goal. What I want to become because people who were here last year, they're not here with us. And next year, we might not be here. This is how we think about it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us barak in our life and to make us understand life in a way that he wants us to understand in regard to the goal and objectives and the vision of the dunya. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على من أمرتم بالصلاة والسلام عليه قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وآل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم احفظ دولة الإمارات من الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن واجمع عليه الأمن والأمان يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون